from Bath, New Hampshire. Welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up this week, is lactic acid cycling's biggest myth? Yes, it is. And we're going to tell you exactly why. Yes, plus we have all of our regular features and also our first ever cycling news bulletin because if we're being honest, we're filming this a little bit earlier than normal, and so we're not actually sure what's going to have happened. But it is 2020, so pretty much anything could have happened. Yeah, let's hope it's good, Dan, for once. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that America's only Tour de France winner uh, Greg LeMond has just launched two new e-bikes which are devoted to city riding. Yeah, and they look very cool too, although details are scarce at the moment. But we'd assume that they're using the type of carbon fibre manufacturer that Le Monde invested in a few years ago, which promises to lower the cost and make it more efficient. Mm. Uh, we also learned this week that the new French Grand Tour hope Guillaume Martin is not only incredibly talented on the bike, he also possesses a master's degree in philosophy and he's written a play. Some people are just too talented, Dan. They are, it's aren't just... they? Although I was thinking about this uh, after we learned this on Velo News because you've got a degree. Right, you know, yeah. I've only got A levels, but still did all right. Yeah. Uh, did. Also, the fact that we both did the Tour of Britain <laughs> and well. uh, 400 GCN shows in, they're a bit like a play every week, which we write, aren't they? So I'd say we're very comparable to are they, Martin. Are they a comedy, Dan, or a tragedy? <laughs> tragedy, I think. I'm joking, of course. He's incredibly talented. And actually, last week on the show, we were talking all about talented cyclists and how good you needed to be to ride the Tour de France. This week, though, we are talking about something which we can all relate to because it affects us all. It's lactic acid. Well done. Does it? Of course it does. You can feel it building up in your legs. It's that burning sensation when you're going really hard on the bike, isn't it? Well, no, except that it doesn't. No. Uh, lactic acid does not make your legs hurt. Although, interestingly, it does make cheese. Yeah. Right? Which makes it a very good thing in my book, because <laughs> I love cheese. Me too. Uh, anyway, do you know where this misconception and myth about lactic acid comes from? Uh, well, I know you do, Si, because you did the research uh, yesterday on this. But actually, it comes from some research done in the 1920s about dismembered frog legs. Uh, yeah. We're not even joking. No, that is weird, isn't it? But let's face it, the pain in your legs when you're riding hard is very real. So what is actually going on? Well. Your body does not produce lactic acid, but rather lactate. In fact, the body is constantly producing lactate and the amount it produces increases rather dramatically when you start to exercise anaerobically. Yeah, in a process called lactating. No, that's a completely different process there, yeah, Simon. Yeah, it is, yeah. Okay. Um, so, your body produces lactate which is often thought of as a waste product, except that it's not. Lactate is actually essential for your body to keep functioning through various complicated chemical reactions. Plus, lactate also still contains loads of energy, which can then either be utilised in cells or indeed metabolised in the liver or kidneys and turned into glucose. Yeah, so lactate is a good thing, basically. Mm. So what is the pain you are experiencing in your legs? Hydrogen ions, apparently, uh, which are released as lactate is formed. Yeah. It doesn't sound quite as kind of dramatic as lactic acid. No. It? Hydrogen ions. No, you would not believe the hydrogen ion burn I've just experienced. Yeah. Oh, man, the hydrogen ions were intense on that last climb. <laughs> Sounds oh. weird, yeah. Uh, although it would be factually correct if you did say yes, that. Yes, it would. Uh, so apparently the release of these hydrogen ions leads to a decrease in pH and therefore a marginal increase in acidity in the body. However, the pain you're experiencing is not down to that acid eating away at your muscles, uh, but apparently it's more down to certain sensory receptors uh, telling you that there's pain. Yeah, and when Dan says it's a marginal decrease in pH, I mean, it really is a marginal decrease. So apparently your body's natural pH when resting is about 7.4. When you exercise so intensely, you get to the point of complete and utter fatigue, it drops down to about seven. However, experiments have shown that when you electrically stimulate a muscle cell outside of the body, it will still function until the pH drops as low as 6.8, suggesting therefore that there must be another reason for why you grind to a halt through complete fatigue, 
other than it being too acidic. Mm. And that modern theory on fatigue is apparently down to an imbalance in potassium levels within the body. Yeah. Uh, so an increase in the amount of potassium you've got flowing around uh, decreases your body's ability to tell a muscle cell to contract. Why is that, Dan? Well, since you ask, Sai, it is down to a progressive lessening of the difference in charge strength between intracellular and intercellular spaces. Wow. You are on point I am, today, yeah. mate. Fantastic. Third time of trying. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, in essence, then, uh, lactate is, well, it's a good thing, isn't it? It's there to make you function and make you function better. Mm. Well, it's all good, isn't it, Sai, having a, a refresh in your school biology lessons, but I'm guessing people are going to want to know what they might be able to do with this newfound information. True. Uh, well, firstly, you should know that you can teach your body to use lactate as a fuel through high intensity interval training, which is a good thing. Yes. Secondly, also be aware that lactate is not the reason why your muscles are sore after you've finished a high intensity interval training session. That is likely to be micro tears in your muscles and no amount of gentle cooling down or stretching or massage is gonna help fix those. You just need time to lay your body to recover. Thirdly, you need not worry about going over your lactate threshold for fear that you're damaging your body. You're not. Uh, and lastly, the knowledge of what's going on in your body can actually help with the discomfort uh, or dealing with the discomfort of high intensity efforts because you're not drowning in lactic acid, but rather lactate is helping you to go faster. Uh, so just ignore those nerve receptors telling you about an increase in hydrogen ions and beat up on potassium instead. Yeah, stupid potassium. I knew there's a reason I didn't like bananas. It does also make you think that there's perhaps truth in the phrase shut up legs. Next up, GCN Inspiration. Three prizes, of course, on offer each and every week for our favourite three photos that have been uploaded to the GCN app. Uh, so without further ado, in third place this week, receiving a pair of striped socks with a French flavour is Shane M.U. Yeah, that's a French flavour to the design, not the sock. Oh, you don't, yeah. Have you put don't, it in your mouth? Don't, yeah, don't. Might be a surprise. That. Well, depends how much you garlicky. like. garlicky. Depends how much you like. Cheese <laughs> flavour, I guess, isn't it? Uh, anyway, sorry, we've... we've Here's the photo, uh, an absolute <laughs> corker, I think you'll agree. A bit controversial in that it features rain, which some people might not find inspiring, mm. but, um, but the, you know, it's a, it's a 6 a.m. commute. Um, Shane has said, uh, Brooklyn to Manhattan, rainy days make for an empty bridge to bomb down. And, uh, well, yeah, there you go. I think that is strangely inspiring, isn't it? Well, I, I'm enjoying looking at the photo. I'm not sure I'm inspired to get out and be at that bridge when it's peeing it down with rain, but uh, each to their own. I guess. Yeah. Good that it's straight, that bridge. It looks mightily slippery. That is true, yeah. Oh man, it won't don't be long get, Don't get many weavy bridges though, do you? Like chicanes and stuff. No. <laughs> For the best, I think. Uh, right then, second place this week, uh, winning a Col de Galibier t-shirt and also a Mont Ventoux epic climb t-shirt um, is this one from W Marsala. Mm. Uh, not a huge description about where they are. In fact, there's no description about where they are. It just says, nice to have the roads to yourself. Well, they're, they're not telling us on purpose, Dan, so they've still got the roads themselves. We're not all going to flock there and go and ride that road as well. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's a bit of a... Um advice to all of you, really, isn't it? That uh, if you're out taking an inspirational photo, hoping to receive a prize, wait till there's no traffic. I mean, even in the busier areas, you can manage that sometimes, can't you? Well, you can, if you wait long enough. Um, so yeah, good point. Anyway. It is a great photo though. It is uh, a great photo. But in our opinion, not as good as the next one uh, this week. And so first place receiving a GCN Stripes hoodie uh, plus Stripes fan jersey, also with a French theme. It is um, Meth Even Bond. I think that might be. So much easier to make yourself go slow on a recovery ride when the views are like this in the Carnot Valley in mid Wales. That is incredible, isn't it? That is a fantastic photo. Although, not entirely sure how I could make myself go slowly down that enticing looking descent. No, and there's also the fact that they must have got up an ascent to get to this descent, which, uh, well, I personally would have always struggled to stay in my recovery zone uh, well, on a climb like that. That's Lots true. Of hydrogen ions going on there. Oh, I can imagine the hydrogen <laughs> ions are all over the place. And probably there's a significant potassium imbalance mm. as well. So, um, so yeah, I hope you have recovered from that. Uh, recovery ride. Yes. But uh, that is wicked, isn't it? That is inspirational. Yep. Uh, right, all we've got to do, as you know, 
uh, to get involved with next week's show is to upload your inspirational cycling photos or videos. We must feature a video very soon, mustn't we? Uh, to the GCN app. We'll pick our favourite three again next week. Yeah, and if you fancy midweek inspiration and you've already watched the GCN show, of course, just open the app and flick through the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of amazing pictures that everyone else has been uploading as well that we just haven't managed to pick this week. It's now time for cycling shorts. Hello and welcome to GCN's first ever cycling news bulletin. This week, much of the progress that was made in the wake of the first wave of COVID infections in building new infrastructure for cyclists in the world's cities seems that it's being slowly eroded. According to The Local in Germany, Berlin has just lost eight bike lanes due to a legal challenge. And unfortunately, it seems to be true in much of the rest of the world as well. Certainly here in the UK, as disgruntled drivers are getting more and more grumpy with it consistently failing to see that they are the traffic problem and not the bike lanes. Uh, now in more COVID news, the organiser of the Giro d'Italia have said that they will not be adopting the two strikes and you're out rule that the Tour de France organisers have adopted. Now on the one hand, you think, well that is quite a good thing because that rule would be seriously difficult to enforce. I personally would not want to be the person telling the yellow jersey or the Manglia Rosa that they've got to go home because two people in their team have tested positive. But still, you also wouldn't want a giant COVID-19 bubble racing around Italy. But according to the event organiser, Mauro Vegni, he will be testing riders, but just putting them into isolation. Anyway, from COVID lows now to, uh, well, to highs, literal highs, because all of cycling's Everesting records may have to change. Why? Well, because the height of Mount Everest might be changing. That's why. So for the first time ever, Nepal and China are going to be collaborating on measuring the height of the mountain. And they are going to be announcing their results very soon. So I await that with interest. Uh, now, if you didn't think that that was cycling related, just you wait for this next story. Because according to Hola magazine, Princess Charlene of Monaco is joining a team that aims to cycle from Calvi in Corsica back home to Monaco. 180 kilometers across the Mediterranean Sea. And so she will be choosing a Schiller water bike, apparently with a top speed of 10 miles per hour. And the relay is, they're hoping, going to take about 24 hours, rather them than me. Now over to Daniel Lloyd with the sport. That was a great bulletin, Si. Uh, and I shall do my best to finish it off with a little bit of racing news from the last week. Uh, firstly, in fact, from the Giro Rosa in Italy. Now I think we all know just how dominant Annemiek van Fleurten has been over the past season or two. But she took things to a new level on Saturday, soloing to the win on stage two, despite the fact that she had to run part of the gravel section that came near the end of the stage. Uh, what I particularly loved was her tweet after the stage reacting to that. Uh, she said that she thought she'd been running, but looking at the footage, realised she was only walking. Uh, well, it doesn't matter, Anami, because you still bossed it. As did Voss, actually, on Sunday, uh, taking stage three. Now, as I record this though, it is the world champion who holds a commanding lead in a general classification. Uh, the other race that's on right now is the Tour de France, of course. And there, Jumbo Visma look almost unbeatable, whilst Ineos Grenadiers, for the first time in Yonks, you haven't heard that word for a while either, have you? Uh, already look beaten. Uh, on yesterday's racing news show though, I talked about the fact that Tali Pogaccia could be the thorn in their side. Just 21 years old, which really is gobsmacking, uh, two stage wins, second at the moment on the general classification and now only 40 seconds off the race lead currently held by Primoz Roglic. And I've got a bit of a soft spot for Pogaccia, I must admit, but we'll see how he gets on in the final week of the race. The other revelation though has been Mark Hershey of Team Sunweb, not just for his attacking style or his ultra aero position, but also for his daredevil descending. You almost can't look at the screen, he's pushing the limits so hard. And so we'll finish Cycling Shorts this week with a brief bit of footage of that descending. So look away now for the next 10 seconds if you're faint of heart. <laughs> Hack. Forward slash bodge of the week now. Uh, next week's hacks and bodges are already up on the app for you to vote on. And we're going to reveal the results of the ones you've been voting on. Uh, right now, in fact, starting mm. with this from C. Jonathan. Uh, symmetry at last. 
Uh, I lost two and a half centimeters in a road traffic accident in my tib and fib. Did heaps of research to fix the issues and lots of suggestions. Final, uh, finally a solution which I managed very easily at a very low cost was to buy 25 to 30 millimeter fixings and packs of shims. Keep them tight and as far back when you fix them in and they fit perfectly in and out of your cleats. Very pleased and now have symmetry. Uh, apologies Brilliant. for spelling. <laughs> no need to apologize. Nope. Um, I think we got everything that you're trying to say there, and already I'm going to say hack. Absolutely, 100% hack. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, well, 79% of everybody else went for hack on that one. Unsur well, actually, I'm surprised it's not a greater yeah. percentage of hack versus bodge for that one. Uh, doing it itself and, and evening things up, which is something you definitely need to do if you've got a leg length discrepancy. Maybe there could have been a bit of 3D printing going on to, uh, yeah, to persuade the remaining 21%. Yeah, over the 80% marker. Yeah, just everyone loves a 3D printed uh, shim. So uh, yeah, maybe try that one next time. Uh, right, next up we've got this one um, from uh, 20D Yanez Cunningham 02. Seriously, guys, what is with <laughs> these we usernames? Got, you know, there, there are plentiful number of people, aren't there, using the GSN app, but surely not all usernames that are fairly simple to read out have been taken just yet. <laughs> please try and make it simple for us. Please, please. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Uh, custom painted Mavic Cosmic Boa shoes. Um, I think those look kind of cool. They look great. Yeah, we've got a bit of a, a trick or theme going on. Although it could also just be um, you accidentally rode through um, some paint because it does look a little bit like it's just sprayed up. Yeah, but that's wheel, modern isn't art, isn't it? Really? Well, I know. Yeah. I mean that. Yeah. Although it does, yeah, kind of look like something I might be able to do with a paintbrush and a few flicks. Mm. <laughs> In fact, actually, my road shoes at the moment look a little bit like that. But instead of um, sort of red and blue, brown, it's just kind of brown. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, but still, I love, you know. I do like a custom painted tune. If you've done it yourself, even better. Oh, hack from me. Hack from me as well. What did the public say? 73% uh, hack. So there we go. Nice one. Yeah. Uh, moving on to Billy Bragg. Finally, an easy one to Fantastic. pronounce. Uh, not the Billy Bragg, well, we I wouldn't imagine. Him. Disc brake fail. Uh, lost the retaining clip, the locating bolt, and the fins from the rear disc brake mech on gravel section. Uh, made it 80 kilometers home with a piece of packing tape and a few other bits and pieces. And uh, Wow. Yeah. I mean, your disc brake's not what you want to bodge, but if it's got you home, mm. I'd say that's a, uh, a trail side hack. Yeah, and me. it's a rear disc, isn't it? So, you know, mainly you need your front brake, don't you? Well, and if it was your front, you could always swap them out, couldn't you? Well, there is that. Yeah. So, yeah, no, nice, that's a hack for nice me, hack definitely. There, sorry. That's hack. Well, uh, let me see, 62 is almost on the fence, but 62% went with hack. Where'd you get your packing tape from there in the middle of a gravel ride? Mm. There's an interesting Good thought. Good question. Uh, right, next one, uh, we've got this from, from Charging Gourmet. You see, that's a good username as well, isn't it? Charging Gourmet, <laughs> yeah. I like that. Yeah, um, first few people on Hacks and Bodges, please learn. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, your username's a bodge. Uh, right, the uh, homemade wheel truing stand. Um, here we go, we've got some 3D printed sliding V-blocks. Wow. Um, and uh, so there we go, it's an automatic hack from me. Is it, well, yeah, really I mean, pretty. that's a very, very high brow uh, homemade wheel tree stand right there, isn't it? My goodness. Also, Looks I'm, I'm slightly than the suspicious, pro Dan, because he said, uh, I uh, made with some old test dial indicators, a micrometer, and some other bits and pieces which were lying around. Now, <laughs> I have managed to locate my micrometer that's been lying around my house, but I suspect not many people have that. No, I wouldn't that, have thought so. Yeah. So it feels a little bit like you've kind of gone out of your way to make a wheel string stand. Well, I don't think we should take that away from him. Uh, no, most right. people did not go into this level of scrutiny science, so 87% of people went for hack, uh, as I think you and I are going to do as well. Well, it is a good use of an old micrometer. It is, yeah. Uh, Von Room sent us this classic wooden pannier wrap. Uh, this bodge <laughs> has it all. Wood, extra bolts, cable ties, clamps, and some other stuff. Um, <laughs> I like uh -huh. the fact that it's sloping as well, just so that anything you put on your panny rack is likely to end up getting stuck in your back wheel or just on the floor. Well, presumably the two pieces of wood that clamp onto the uh, seat stay there weren't quite long enough. <laughs> anyway, Genius. Bodge, surely. Oh, 100% bodge. Well, I mean, you could just lower the fixing bolt on your seat post and you yeah. achieve it. Well, it's not 100% bodge size, 90%. According to the general public, uh, but yeah, bodge from both of us. And then next up, we've got one from Grave L Gravel Girl. Sorry, my goodness, that was my fault. <laughs> Slightly Come on, Gravel thinking, Girl, get a grave rather than gravel. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, it's good. Uh, Calliope in the bikes bar. Uh, here is my Moots Route YBB having a spa day in our newly renovated bike shower. 
Oh my word, that is cool. Like that is seriously cool. Uh, we had a bike shower plumbed in um, and poured into the foundation of the of the wow. house. That's incredible. We've the concrete never had, guy. We've thought... never had any kind of bike shower. I don't think ever no. have we. Let alone a, a homemade hack or budge yeah. bike shower. Apparently, the concrete guy thought we were crazy. But um, but if you ride year round in Vermont, you need an indoor bike shower. Mm. Genius! I love it. That's fantastic. Well, that's a definite hack for me. Uh, well, 77% of people, sorry, I haven't asked you what you were going to say yet, so I, but hack. Well, I can't believe that 23% of people think that that's a budge. Imagine the, the comfort of cleaning your bike uh, in a garage indoors as opposed oh. to outside in the middle of winter. Amazing. Brilliant stuff. Yeah. Uh, right, last one for this week, Gary M11901. I mean, how many Gary M's have we had register for the app, do you think? Anyway, uh, <laughs> look who is. A bike wash stand with optional rider relaxation station. Wow, that's kind of cool, isn't it? I like that. You've got a hammock uh, attached to your bike washing station. Um, so, uh, what's what slightly upsetting, Dan? Sorry, I'm just looking ahead. But but this one has only got fractionally more hacks than the other one, which was a was an indoor bike shower. Yeah. Oh, I don't know what the world is coming to. But anyway, I like I like your ingenuity there. Um, and actually, uh, that looks like a really solid hammock fix. Yeah, well, we've well. Seen, we, yeah, I mean, we've seen better homemade bike stands, but not with the relaxation uh, station at the same time. So a hack for me. Yeah, no, I mean, there's a hack for me too. Uh, I said that was the last one. We've actually got one more this week. Uh, right. That comes in from DJBM. Phone stand for watching GCN race pass. Two smart plugs upside down sitting on the pins of a UK plug. Hack! And a great reminder that the breakaway is on every single stage uh, after the Tour de France. So we get daily analysis from uh, Bradley Wiggins, Sean Kelly, Brian Smith and all of Shenoui. So make sure you tune in for that. Caption competition time now, that part of the show where you get your chance to get your hands on a coveted GCN Elite water bottle, which actually I can't get my hands on because it's the wrong side of our of safety the barrier. Glass. Yeah. Yes. Um, don't tempt me, Dan. Um, limited edition yellow colour, by the way. Uh, anyway, we will start, as always, with the, with the Sorry. results. <laughs> the over. Last week's show. Don't realise my own strength sometimes. It's incredible. <laughs> not, Dan. not that this is flimsy at all. Sorry, carry on. Um, what was the thing? Oh, yeah, we're starting with the results, as we always do. Um, so, this was the photo last week of uh, Mikhail Shah with his really creepy, kind of like artificial smile on his mask <laughs> that Dan pointed out. Uh, and the winner is Massimo Caradonna. Oh no, I think I just sharted. Uh, he follows that up with an explanation as to what shart means, but uh, I'm sure most of you know. If not, uh, if you feel like it, you can look it up. Very uh, true. <laughs> brilliant stuff, Massimo. Uh, send us your address as a Facebook message and we'll get that out to you. Uh, this week's photo um, comes from the Tour de France as well. Uh, I'll start you off. These face masks are a pain in the neck when you want to take a drink, aren't they? I mean, <laughs> it's probably not that painful. It's not uh, terrible, is it? But no. um, well, go on. Let's let's see if if you if guys can do better. Can do better than yeah, that. go on. I'm going to say that. Try and do better than that, eh? Yeah. Well, I won't. I'll just I'll just leave it down to mm. you guys. If you want to enter, stick your caption in the comment section down beneath this video, and uh, as ever, we will go through with a fine tooth comb and pick out our favourite next week. We will. Uh, also, just before we finish, I think we've still got a small supply of these yellow beadons left at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com and you might also see that we've got a bit of a French thing going on today. I mean, hats off to whoever came up with this t-shirt design. It's our second week running. It's a great joke. You still haven't ironed <laughs> yeah. your t-shirt though, have you? Yeah, so, slightly uh, better. Well, it's come out of a packet and uh, it was less creased in the packet than last week's one there we go. was. Um, I'm still rocking the Tricolore Stripes theme, yeah. which I like very much indeed. All available over on the shop and you'll find a link to that on your screen right now. If you you'd like to make a purchase. We've got a lot of comments to go through from the previous seven days worth of videos because we've had some crackers and we don't leave any of them out, uh, after which we will let you know what's coming up over the next week. Uh, so underneath last week's show, Phil Cooper, uh, Philip Cooper, great show lads, uh, GCN inspired me to buy a road bike after years of riding a mountain bike. I've already done 500 kilometers on my entry level B-Twin bike in less than three weeks after purchase. Wow. Uh, well, well done to you, Philip, first of all, and secondly, well done to us for converting a mountain biker. Yes, that's very cool, isn't it? Well, yeah, awesome. Thanks for letting us know. Um, Andy Mitchell uh, pointed out under last week's GCN show um, that when I said high fives all round, 
Yeah, I gave two thumbs up. <laughs> so, sorry about that. So high fives all around. Um, and actually, there was also a thing about us and our dad bants, wasn't there? And I, I, that's the ultimate uncool dad, isn't it? Like high fives, kids. Yes. Oh god. Yeah, yeah it's happening. It's happening uh, early. Also under the show, Dion Forster. Thanks for 400 informative, fun, engaging episodes. You are the cool dads of cycling. <laughs> Contradicting what you just said, Si. Uh, we've all grown up watching you. Oh my goodness me. But I mean, you know, it's quite it's sort of tinged with a bit of an insult that we're dads. I mean, we are dads, obviously, and we are getting old, but you know, just to see it in black and white. Yeah, goodness. we've all grown up watching you, which kind of infers that we're really old. Yeah, yeah and they but... probably haven't actually grown up in a maturity sense by no. watching us. Uh, anyway, anyway, also under that, KOM Hunt TV. Can anyone ride the Tour de France? Before watching, I know this is Hank's next challenge. <laughs> yeah. Imagine if we could persuade a team to let Hank on to the Tour de France. <laughs> well, it'd be good for their morale, wouldn't he? He would be very good for their morale. Um, we'd also be able to big him up on the GCN show, wouldn't we? So, yeah. you know, like, yeah. Give them great value. Yeah. Um, it might delay the breakaway show each uh, evening as we wait for him to come in. He might, yeah. Or it might just be the first couple of stages and then he's back in, back home, <laughs> isn't he? But anyway, there we go. Yeah, we, we'd be up for that. I'm sure Hank would wouldn't say no either. Frankly, I wouldn't say no actually, but um, might not be able to do it. Uh, mm. Anyway, um, underneath the slow versus fast video, which was actually a couple of weeks ago now, um, I did have a chuckle at some of the comments. Um, Catherine S said, I fear hugging Cyrus might be a bit like hugging a tree, no padding. So uh, yes, that is true. Um, and also, uh, but this one I really liked from CGB, slow to think, faster to forget. Mm. Which I really, oh, that really hit the nail on the head for me. It, well, yeah, very good. Slow uh, and finally, Churchurun. I've communed twice with nature while mountain biking in the last three years. So relaxing. Uh, combined, I spent 16 days in the hospital and received 21 fractures as a souvenir. And then there was the three months in a cervical collar that followed the last one. Uh, yeah, lots of time to myself. So relaxing. Yeah, you, yeah you've, got to, you've got to watch out the speed that you tree hug. I'd suggest doing it at less than walking pace. Any faster than that and you do run a risk. Um, yeah, you, you've come to grief a couple of times in recent years, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, touch wood, um, it didn't involve a tree, it was the ground that, um, <laughs> that did it. Um, yeah. but, well, trees uh, can sometimes be softer than the ground side, depending on the size of the tree, obviously. Yeah. Uh, right, let's let you know what's coming up on the channel over the next seven days. Uh, so on Wednesday, we're going to let you know how to become a pro cyclist. Um, so if you're under the age of 30, you might want to watch that. Yeah. Uh, you might be interested even otherwise. Well, remember, no age limit on Drift Academy this no. year. So you could uh, be 37. <coughs> on Thursday, we're going to let you know the top 10 best things about bike riding. Obviously, that was quite hard to keep down to 10, but still. And on Friday, right tyre versus wrong tyre. And yeah. you might be surprised at what differences there are. Indeed, there are. Uh, Saturday, um, Hank's latest challenge is not riding the Tour de France. Um, it's can you train like a pro and work like average Joe? So uh, there we go. That's. Uh well, I suspect he's going to end up in a bit of a box after that one. Um, just lots of hydrogen ions everywhere. It's going to be it's going to be messy. And Sunday is Connor's. Well, it's his toughest ever race, the Donegal 555 Ultra Endurance Race, and he's got to do it on a 1,000 pound bike. So uh, yeah, there we go. Well, I think the bigger test is the 555 kilometres, if I'm honest. Well, yeah, mid-range bike versus epic challenge. Mm. He didn't go. want to be outdone by Hank's challenges, did he? No. Know? So you can see how he got on with that. Uh, right, well, I think that's pretty much it for this week's GCN show. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the news bulletin, which neither of us have seen as we record oh. this section of the show. Oh. I hope I hope it's good news, Dan, I really do. Well, we won't keep the bad news in there, will we? We'll make sure it's good news only. OK, I hope we can find enough good news. <laughs> but uh, anyway, yeah, there we go. Um, well, yeah, please uh, remember to check out shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com uh, for the... Uh, for the for the French-themed merchandise we got going on at the moment. Very yeah. topical. And we'll see you next week. Bye for now.